Hey guys, what is up this? So if you're in today, I'll be doing an unboxing and review of the Arctic Extreme 3. This is a graphics card, uh, custom graphics card cooler that you can install on your graphics card, of course. And uh, it provides uh, better cooling, uh, supposedly, and uh, it is supposed to be quieter as well. So uh, that's something that you want to take note of. So anyway, uh, we'll just do the unboxing first, then the review will come in a later part. Uh, I will be benchmarking on my reference R9290, uh, the graphics card that is well known to uh, be extremely, extremely loud. And uh, it is also very, very hot as well. So let's see how this cooler uh, will provide a better cooling solution to the reference cooler on the R9290. So anyway, let's just take a look around the box um, nothing much here now this compatibility kind of thing is kind of update outdated uh, rather uh, you should check the website uh, it supports some of the later few graphics card as well especially from AMD you can see that the R9290 is technically uh, not supported but uh, on the website it is updated to say that it is so that's something you should take note well, uh, from what I've read, uh, it isn't exactly 100% compatible, but uh, it is more or less, uh, more or less, and it works anyway. So you can see some of these specifications, etc. If you are interested, you can take a look at the website for more information anyways. So uh, let's just open it up and see what they give us. Right, so what we have here is the... Oh shit, I want to touch the... Oh my god. We have the cooler. Okay, uh, so don't make the same mistake. They have, they have pre-applied thermal paste underneath it. So this is the cooler itself. It's massive. As you can see, I touched the thermal paste. Very stupid of me. Um, okay, I've got... And uh, inside... I'm not sure why it doesn't come with a cap of a, or anything like that to actually um, prevent such a thing from happening but uh, inside we have some of the RAM hit, hit things as well as the instruction menu um, you can take a look I'm not going to take them out now uh, because it's going to be confusing later for me uh, they provide uh, thermal uh, adhesive as well for the application of the hit sinks and uh, we have uh, insulation tapes to protect uh, any short circuit thing when you install it and uh, I'm not sure what this is. A PCI back bracket as well. The mounting plate, more heat sinks of all kinds of sizes. This is the there is the 12 volt and a 7 volt one. As you can see, you can read it here. 12 volts. This is seven. Uh, this is for the fan, the fans on the cooler itself. And uh, the instruction menu, which is going to be extremely helpful when you're going to install the um, cooler on your graphics card. So that's about it. I'll get back to you with the benchmark. If you'd like to see an installation guide, you can look at my other video, which will be installing it. We'll be installing the graphics card cooler on the R9290 reference uh, edition. So yeah, I'll see you guys again soon. For the full specifications of my testing rig, which is basically my own PC itself, uh, you can take a look at the full written review, which will have the link. I will put the link to that in the description bar below. Otherwise, uh, you should know that the only difference between the two is basically the uh, the cooler, whether is it installed with the stock cooler or the uh, Arctic Extreme 3 cooler on the R9290. Now the other thing is that the load temperatures are based off uh, an in-game uh, performance. Uh, I didn't run any benchmark or anything like that. But yeah, so it is, I basically run a game and I played it for a while and I recorded some of the values. And the game played was sim similar for both the stock cooler as well as the uh, Arctic Extreme 3. 
So you can see here, uh, I use GPU Z to actually record the temperatures and the idle temperatures for the GPU core, uh, it's about ver it's very similar, but uh, the difference comes when you go into the load temperatures. Now you can see the extreme tree uh, is highlighted by the red bars and the stock cooler is the blue, if you do not know already. Uh, the load temperatures for the extreme tree cooler on the R9 290 is much lower. Uh, it's about 10 degrees plus lower. And uh, you can see the delta temps as well. Both are about 25 or 26 uh, degrees Celsius uh, ambient temperature. Uh, so that is for the core, GPU core temperatures. But when you go into the VRMs, uh, now there is this problem with the extreme tree. I will explain a little bit more about that. But you can see here the VRM temperatures for VRM1 uh, for the stock cooler is surprisingly better. Sorry, not surprisingly it isn't very surprising because of the way it is implemented, the cooling, uh, which I will explain a little bit more later. So you can see that uh, on both idle and load temperatures, the VRM1 uh, using the Extreme 3 cooler is hotter than the stock cooler and is quite um, by a big margin as well. Uh, so there comes a problem when you want to uh, overclock your card, especially if you're going to overvote it, uh, there is this problem with temperatures. So you should uh, take extra uh, precaution when you are going to overvote your card. Then next up is VRM2. Now this one uh, is slightly in favor of the Extreme 3. You can see again the temperatures for idle uh, for the Extreme 3 is higher, but that doesn't really matter because when what what really matters is when the GPU is running. Uh, when it's stressed out, right? When it's in load. And the load temperatures for the VRM2s for the Extreme 3 is uh, lower than the stock cooler anyways. So you can see here overall the uh, Extreme 3 does provide a significant temperature improvement. Now I have to put in this note and that the sound, noise produced from both coolers is what makes it so much difference. Now the stock cooler, if I remember correctly, I had to manually set the uh, fan speed to roughly about 60 to 70 percent and that sounded so loud. Oh my god, I don't know how to explain but uh, it's so loud. You know, I actually thought I could take this sound because my computer is uh, down below, not beside me, uh, and uh, it is, and I have experienced uh, loud graphics card before, loud coolers at least, but it is not to the extent of the loudness of a R9290 stock cooler that is a uh, reference cooler. So yeah, it's very very loud. The stock cooler is so loud, it is probably unbearable uh, for most people unless you're using some kind of headset or anything like that. Uh, the sound that you get from the stock cooler uh, to get such cooling temperatures that I show you in the graph it is just you cannot tolerate such sound and noise produced. The, well on the other hand the Extreme Tree, the Arctic Cooling Extreme Tree custom cooler is so quiet I set the fan speed to 100% which you should otherwise your VRAMs are not going to be cooled at all uh, and uh, they are you probably cannot even hear them. Uh, they're as loud, if not less loud, uh, than your uh, softer than your case fans at least. So uh, the thing I would like to talk about is the VRAMs. The way the stock cooler cools the VRAMs when you are actually dis disassembling the stock cooler, you will see that uh, they use the um, they use these thermal tapes, I believe, something like that, and it presses on to these VRAMs and all their chips so that it has a pressured contact uh, compared to the heat sinks that the Extreme 3 uses as you can see in the video uh, um, in the installation video which I'll put a link as well uh, it basically used that one uses a uh, thermal paste uh, no thermal glue to uh, stick on some heat sinks and this doesn't create enough pressure uh, for heat transfer to be quick enough or efficient enough. 
that's why you see the higher temperatures and uh, that's also one reason why you have to on the fan to 100% for the extreme tree in order to give adequate uh, cooling for the heat sinks and airflow for the heat sinks to cool down otherwise your uh, v VRAMs will uh, overheat and might even burn out so uh, yeah the implementation of the stock reference cooler the way they cool the VRAMs is extremely good but uh, of course there are its own problems as well uh, the problem about the noise produced and it is hot right the cut itself is hot the core temperatures of the chip is hot as well so that's about it if you are looking for a uh, custom cooler for R9290 and you already have a reference card or do not have stock available for the other cards available uh, then you might want to consider the Extreme 3 there is also the Extreme 4 available uh, the active cooling Extreme 4 which has better uh, compatibility I believe uh, and it has a back plate as well so I'm not sure how much it's gonna help but uh, yeah you can get that as well it's probably about 10 to 20 dollars more expensive otherwise the Extreme 3 if you have it available it works very well as well uh, comparatively to the uh, stock coolers this is so much quieter and so much better uh, of course this is tested only on a R9290 um, but there are results out there that I've seen before that the Arctic cooling uh, custom GPU coolers especially the extreme series do provide perfect or very good uh, noise to performance ratio so yeah that's about it you can take a look at my installation video uh, it should be up soon and I'll put the link as well and you can see how I feel at installing the uh, extreme tree itself otherwise uh, do subscribe for more such content or leave a comment if you have any questions uh, or leave a like if you find this video informative I'll see you guys again soon